to me, LA is one of the most influential cities in the world. Our style is embraced on other sides of the planet. It's something about the black and gray tattoos, the low riders, the white tees. They want to be a part of the Chicano, Mexican American view of life. If you're going to love me. It's like a box that they put people in. It's like a square you don't get out of. When we show up looking like this, people automatically judge us. But when they find out what type of people we are, they're like, oh, shit. We're people that aren't supposed to, we're not supposed to make it. I figure if we could show that me and him could do it, any little kid that's growing up in the neighborhood can, can see that and, and kind of get you know, inspired by it. We would tell people, like, we're going to be huge rap stars one day. And they would be like, you know, you're crazy. You guys need to get a job is what you need to get. It's the pulse of the city. It's the heartbeat of Los Angeles. The roots of this city are Chicano. Look at every major metropolitan city in America, it's all European based. But when you come to Los Angeles, that's not the case. Los Angeles is basically built on, you know, with people of color, like it's close to Mexico. Chicano style, I think of Pendleton's, I think of flannels buttoned up, Dickies clean, pressed. That style that was borrowed from the alpha male in that neighborhood, which is gonna be the gang member. There's like a trickle down, you know, there's like a pecking order. At the time, in the 90s, the whole city, we looked like cholos. A lot of the fashion references were from people in jail. You know, Dickies, like, sagging your pants. We tried to take the negative and make it positive. When you're from a marginalized culture, you use style as resistance. It might be your hoops, and it could be your Cortez. We invented the white tee, micro corduroys and raw denim. The Cortezes went right with it. That was a uniform for us. When you look at where everything fly is really rooted, it really comes from the neighborhood. So I went on stage and mandatory visits, you know, gotta have your shit nice and clean all day, every day. This is a program, this is how it's done, homie, you know what I'm saying? Before we hit them streets, homie, gotta be crispy, dog. Fly till I die. G'd up from the feet up, dog, all the time. Can't get caught slipping, homie, you know what I mean? Looking raggedy, dog. Chris, used to you cut your fingers, dog. I think just in culture in general, when you don't have a lot and you're stretching what you can, what you do have, you want it to look good, you want to look clean, you want to look presentable, you want to feel like I'm just as good as the next, even though I don't have the same amount. It still has their teeth, so I could still ride with these for a little more. Once they're gone, now, see, I throw the shits in the trash and go buy another pair. You know, I remember a certain time when I used to mural cars, I would have to get a new pair of Cortez every Friday, you know, because I beat them up over the week. Right now, I'm getting a piece ready for the Peterson Automotive Museum. We're doing a show about Chicano art and how the cars are actually art, the lowriders are art. I'm one of the few artists that are an automotive artist. Most of the guys are fine artists. It's certain things if you really, you know, know the culture and know the city that stick out. Art is one of those things. Another one is cars. Cartoon is exceptional in both of those things. You know what I'm saying, art and cars. 80, 90% of my tattoos are Mr. Cartoon. That's one of the echelons of Chicano culture and pop culture, in my opinion. It's hard for me to say, but I'm going hard regardless. I'm going to get it either way. There's no better time for Chicano artists right now. But, you know, you don't really see Chicanos designing shoes, especially if you're not a pro boxer or something like that. I had already designed, like, a pair of Levi's, and I had been designing my own little clothes, so... I already knew kind of the process of it, 
I knew one person that worked at Nike. I'm like, go picture it. West Coast, Mr. Cartoon, Nike, Cortez. <sighs> That's a good idea to go stand in line, you know? Everyone wants to do a shoe. And eventually, Supreme and Undefeated, they talked to the Nike execs and were like, that makes sense. The first one I did was the Aztec Cortez. Being the name was a Cortez, the Aztec thing, it was clashing. I wanted to show the Spaniards coming and fighting and battling the Aztecs. When you look at the Aztec warrior, he has a big brush on him. They didn't grow facial hair like that. It was the Moors coming over, escaping the Spanish Inquisition that melted into the people. They left their mark, and their mark was facial hair. That Aztec warrior is a modern-day Chicano that I drew right there. And then at the same time, we did the L.A. shoe and actually embossed the L.A. on the side of the shoe. So 10 years later, it's 2017, it's the 45-year anniversary of the Cortez. If these two shoes were to have a baby, it would look like this. You know, I knew I had to do a white shoe. Once again, Nike let me do my own font, do my own style script. Then for the final, we came in, and this was a lot of people's favorite, the diamond style tuck and roll shoe, paying homage to the interiors of our lowriders. Just knowing who Cartoon was and being a fan of Nike also, when Cartoon made it, it was just like a stamp on it to have like a LA on the side of your Cortez. And then I was blessed enough to get my leg tapped from him, you know what I mean? And we've been running ever since. Cortez people, you could call them the frontliners of Los Angeles, you know what I'm saying? My dad is my LA inspo when it comes to fashion. He wore Dickies, he wore Cortezes. We see it all the time, people reappropriating the hoops and the Cortezes in high fashion magazines. We started using the Cortez Fall 16 and We've since continued to use it. Vogue totally picked up on it, and, and there was an article on Vogue.com about how it's the return of the Cortez. It's a trip how we all connect, you know? Shoe game, the tattooing, the cars, all that brings people together. People all over the world are picking up on it. You're right, white tees are the shit. You're right, these portraits and fine line and classic cars tattooed on your arm just looks better than the rest of it. It's kind of gone in, as far as Tokyo. I've seen it look in Tokyo, I've seen it look in London. And yes, in those epicenters, it kind of just spreads out from there. For me, it works because I'm not trying to sell Chicano art, that's what I am and the way I draw. I want to keep us up. I want to make my culture the bomb, you know, the shit. So that future youngsters will be able to come up and be artists as a result. I don't want to be like that.